The Lord be with you. Welcome uh, to our service this morning. We're celebrating today uh, the baptism of our Lord, the first Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, we regularly, every year, uh, celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus. One of these really important stories about Jesus that's actually uh, recorded in all four of the Gospels in one form or another, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, today we'll read about it uh, from the Gospel of Mark, uh, and we'll hear about how our Lord was baptized, how He was proclaimed uh, to be God. God's beloved Son, uh, how the Holy Spirit was poured out on Him, and what that means for us and our baptism as well. That's what we want to be uh, pondering here this morning uh, as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. The order of service for today uh, is uh, available either in the email in which you received the link to this service, or uh, it's below the in the below the YouTube video in the description. There, there'll be a link to it as well. In case you don't uh, receive these services by email, uh, you can follow along there. You'll especially want to have that handy uh, because the words to the hymns they won't be up on the screen or anything like that. You'll need them uh, from the order of service so that you can sing along uh, and join in the responses wherever you happen. To to be. Uh, a couple other announcements before we get started. The first is that uh, I've had a few people ask me about Bible study and whether or not, since our Bible studies are relatively small, in some cases less than 10 people, whether or not we could go ahead and just keep having Bible study. Uh, but we're not going to do that. Um, we're not going to come together for Bible study again like we had planned to before the lockdown started and everything like that. Uh, we'll hold off on that for now, uh, trying to abide by really the spirit of this whole lockdown thing to stop the spread of this virus. Uh, by gathering as little as possible. Uh, but I will be recording online video Bible studies for you, so watch for something uh, at some point during this week uh, to keep giving you Bible study even though we're not able to come together. So there's that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to remind you of is offering. Uh, you're able to uh, either give online through the Lutheran Church Canada link that was available uh, in the email in which you received this service, if that's how you received it, uh, or uh, you can send your offerings for both both Redeemer members and Christ our Savior members, you can send your offerings to Christ our Savior. You can mail them to Christ our Savior, and I'll be there to sort them out and make sure they end up in the right place. Uh, but those are the two best ways to continue giving and, and supporting the ministry of our congregations, even though we're not able to be together right now. And thank you, a uh, big thank you especially to those of you who do continue to give like that. It is a blessing uh, that you do that. Uh, next, um, is an announcement about Holy Communion. Today, January 10th, this afternoon, uh, we'll be offering Holy Communion at Christ our Savior. Some of you have registered already for that. Thank you for doing that. Uh, in, in Next week, next Sunday, we'll be doing the same thing at Redeemer. In the afternoon, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., I'll be here at Redeemer uh, offering Holy Communion for those who would like to receive it. You need to call in advance to register for that. We can only have uh, 10 or less people here at the church, so it's all in small groups and, uh, and done according to the guidelines and protocols and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but if you'd like to receive Holy Communion next Sunday and you're a member of Redeemer, uh, call me at some point during this week to, to register. The details about that are also in the email in which you received this service. Uh, so then after that, there's just one more thing to announce. In addition to our prayer list this morning, uh, we're going to pray for uh, one of the members out at Christ Our Savior. Her name is Wendy Willison. Uh, her mother passed away uh, this past week, uh, and so we will keep her and her family in our prayers uh, as they mourn uh, the as they mourn her death. So we'll, we'll pray for Wendy uh, as well today. That, I think, is all I need to announce before we get started. So we'll begin with our opening hymn, number 394, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. Man, if 
manifest, manifest in power divine, changing water into wine. Anthems be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest, manifest in making whole, palsied limbs and fainting soul, manifest in valiant fight, quelling all the devil's might, manifest in gracious will, ever bringing good from ill, anthems be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Sun and moon shall darkened be, stars shall fall, the heavens shall flee, Christ will then like lightning shine, all will see his glorious sign. All will then the trumpet hear, all will see the judge appear. Thou by all wilt be confessed, God in man made manifest. Grant us grace to see thee, Lord, present in thy holy word. Grace to imitate thee now, and be pure as pure art thou, that we might become like thee at thy great epiphany. Praise the ever blessed God in man made manifest. We continue on page two of the order of service with confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll speak together now the words of Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf 
and Sirion like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors of him with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord is from Genesis chapter 1. And we'll hear here from right at the very beginning of the scriptures, the beginning of the story of creation. And there's a little parallelism between the psalm that we just read and, and what we're going to read here. In the psalm, we, we, we said that the voice of the Lord hovers over the waters. And here we're going to see that the spirit of the Lord hovers over the waters. And those two things come together, especially in baptism, as we rejoice that God's word uh, and the spirit come together to us in holy baptism to make it a, a life-giving flood, as the scriptures call it. And so here, we, we, we start just with the story of creation. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over fa the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 6. And it's very, this very important chapter in Paul's letter to the Romans where he not only takes up the subject of baptism, but takes up the, the life that we have now as God's people who have been baptized. And we'll consider this, this text a little bit as well uh, in the sermon this morning. So from Romans chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John appeared 
baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith now using the words of the Apostles' Creed. They're printed in the order of service on the top of page 5. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Can we say hi to all our friends at home, our church friends who can't be here with us today? Can we say hi? Hi. Hi. We miss all of you. Wish you all could be here for a children's message with us. All right. Uh, Well, today we're talking about the baptism of Jesus. That's what our gospel reading is today, how Jesus got baptized by John in the Jordan River. Now, before we talk about that, just just a couple of weeks ago, someone from our family got baptized, right? Who got baptized? Samantha. Samantha got baptized. On Christmas Day we did that, didn't we? Now... You guys were all there. What are some things that you noticed when Samantha got baptized? She cried. She cried? Yeah, sometimes babies do that when we have a baptism. Yeah. What else? What else did you notice? Did you notice anything? Uh, What do you remember? I wonder if our friends at home, if they've seen someone get baptized, if they remember or they noticed anything when someone got baptized, maybe they could think about that for for themselves. What do you guys remember? Miss Tracy was holding Samantha. Yeah, someone's holding the baby. Yeah, Tracy was holding Samantha that um, day. Um, you put the water on her. Yeah, we poured some water on Samantha's head. Uh, did anybody notice the words that we said when we did that? Yeah. What were the words? I can't remember. Okay, the words are, uh, I said, Samantha, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Those are the words we use, yeah? And then after the baptism, we gave Samantha some presents. We gave her a cloth, which was the cloth that we used to wipe off her head and dry her up again, right? And we gave her a candle, right? All these little special things. And a candle reminds her about how Jesus is the light of the world, and he came to be with her. So those are a lot of the things that happen in a baptism, and maybe our friends remember some of those kinds of things too. Now, when Jesus got baptized, some different things happened. Does anybody know what happened when Jesus got baptized? Uh-uh. The Bible tells us that when Jesus got baptized, heaven was opened up and somebody came down. Who came down? Jesus. The, yeah, the Holy Spirit came down like a dove. Yeah, Jesus was already down. He was down in the water, right? And God said from heaven... You are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. That's what happened when Jesus got baptized. But this is the really cool thing. This is the very exciting thing. 
This is a very exciting thing. When you got baptized, and when you got baptized, and when you got baptized, and when I got baptized, and when all our friends at home got baptized, the very same things happened. Nobody could notice them. Nobody could see them or hear them. But when you and you and you and you and you and you and you got baptized, God said, you are my beloved daughter, 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 son, sons and daughters. With you, I am well pleased. And God gave the Holy Spirit to us. Mm -hmm. So we say thank you to God today for the gift of baptism and all that he gives us because Jesus got baptized in the Jordan River for us. So let's pray and thank God for that, okay? Dear God, thank you for making us your children. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior. Thank you for sending him to be baptized by John in the Jordan River. And thank you for baptizing us so that we could have eternal life with you forever. Help us to remember all this good news and trust in you all the time. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. All right, let's say bye-bye to our friends at home. Bye-bye, and we'll hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. There we go. Dear saints in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Unless you're a real history buff kind of person, you probably don't realize this, but today, January 10th, is actually a significant day in world history. On this day, 2070 years ago, on January 10th, 49 BC, 40, some 49 years before the birth of Christ, Julius Caesar, who was at the time the governor of the Roman province of Gaul, which is essentially modern day France, and was the general of the Roman army in that province, he made the decision to march his troops, the army which he commanded, south across the Rubicon River into Italy. Now, 
Marching an army across a river might not seem like a particularly significant event in world history. But here's the thing. By doing this, by marching his army across the river into Italy, Julius Caesar was essentially declaring war against the Roman Republic and the Senate that ruled over that Republic. Roman law prohibited any provincial governor or any general of any army from bringing their armies into Italy. It simply was not allowed. To do so was an act of treason, an act of war. And yet, on this day, January 10th, 2,070 years ago, that is exactly what Julius Caesar did. He led his army across the Rubicon River into Italy and essentially declared war against the Roman Republic. And the rest, as they say, is history. The Roman Civil War broke out, and Julius Caesar and his army went on to win that war, and the Roman Empire, no longer a republic, was founded. With that little bit of historical background in mind, maybe you can see how fitting it is that today, on January 10th, we are celebrating the baptism of Jesus. It's fitting that we celebrate the baptism of Jesus today because when Jesus went down to the Jordan River and was baptized there by John, he was doing something similar to what Julius Caesar had done some 80 or so years previously. Jesus, when he went down to the Jordan River and was baptized by John, was declaring war. Jesus' baptism might not seem like much of a declaration of war at first. Actually, it, it seems like a rather peaceful kind of affair, doesn't it? Jesus went down into the water. He came up out of the water. The heavens were opened. The Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove, which, by the way, is a, a peaceful creature if ever there was one. And God the Father said in an authoritative voice, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. It hardly seems like a declaration of war. And yet, when you read this story, the story of the baptism of Jesus, in light of everything that comes after it, you can see that that's exactly what it was. Jesus going down to the Jordan River and being baptized by John was a declaration of war. In the verses that immediately follow our gospel reading today, Mark tells us that after Jesus was baptized, the Spirit, the same Holy Spirit which had come down out of heaven in the form of a dove, the Holy Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. Do you see it? Do you see how the battle, the war, has now begun as Jesus has been baptized. The moment, the very moment Jesus came out up out of the water, the moment that voice boomed from heaven, the moment the Holy Spirit came down, the war began. And Jesus wastes no time in taking the war straight to the enemy. Out into the wilderness he goes, and there he battles victoriously against the devil our old evil foe. But that's just the beginning. That's just the very first thing, the very first battle of the war. From there, in the rest of Mark chapter 1, the battles just keep going. The next thing Mark tells us is how Jesus began preaching. Having been out in the wilderness for 40 days, Jesus goes to Galilee, back to civilization again. And Mark says that Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The battle that was begun there in the Jordan River, that was fought out there in the wilderness, is now brought into civilization, and Jesus proclaims 
that this battle is now brought right into the homes and hearts of people. Repent and believe the gospel. The kingdom of God is here. Jesus says, the kingdom and the reign of the devil, the evil one, has been ended and the kingdom of God has come. Then Mark tells us Jesus began calling disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. It's almost like he was, was gathering an army around himself. Then Jesus went with Peter, Andrew, James, and John to Capernaum, the town where at least some of them lived. And he taught in the synagogue there, Mark says. And while Jesus was teaching in the synagogue there, Mark tells us that there was a man with an unclean spirit. And that unclean spirit cried out and said, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. His unclean spirit recognized what was going on, didn't he? He saw and he felt that Jesus was waging war against them. Have you come to destroy us, he says. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, said to him, be silent and come out of him. And the spirit came out. Again, that same day after the synagogue worship was finished, Jesus, Mark tells us, went to Peter and Andrew's house and Peter's mother-in-law was there and apparently she was sick with a very high fever. Jesus, however, came to her, took her by the hand, lifted her up, and the fever left her. And she began to serve them, Mark says. The war that Jesus is waging isn't just a spiritual war. It's not just a war for the spirits or the souls of human beings, but a war for the entirety of a human being, bodies and souls together. He comes to defeat all of the enemies. That evening, Mark says, Jesus healed many people, as many as they brought to him. He cast out demons, he healed diseases, and then the next day, after a night of prayer, Jesus sets off to go to other towns and other villages to continue the battle as he wages the war against the evil one. Before he could leave, however, a man with leprosy came. And one more time, Jesus heals him. Moved with pity, Mark says, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. And immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. All of this, believe it or not, is recorded for us in Mark chapter 1. Everything I've just re recounted to you is right there in Mark chapter 1. And all of it is the immediate result of Jesus being baptized by John in the Jordan River. It's the immediate result of Jesus there declaring war against the powers of of evil. Over the next few weeks, not, not, not next Sunday actually, next Sunday we're going to hear from the Gospel of John, but then we'll get back to the Gospel of Mark again after that. And over those Sundays, we're going to hear all of these stories each on their own, and we'll have time to, to dig into them individually. But for today, it's important for us to see that there in the Jordan, John, Jesus declared war against the powers of evil. And that as he waged that war, he was victorious every step along the way. He was victorious over Satan in the wilderness. He was victorious over the unclean spirit in the synagogue. He was victorious over fevers and illnesses, even illnesses so severe as leprosy. He was victorious over all of it, over sin, over death, and over the devil. It may sound strange, still, to call Jesus' baptism a declaration of war, but really the truth is, is that every baptism, not just Jesus' baptism, but every Christian baptism, is exactly that, a declaration of war. When we bring a, a child here to the church, for example, to have him or her baptized, or even when an adult convert comes and is baptized here at the church, it may seem like a peaceful affair. But think about what the scriptures are really saying is happening there when someone gets baptized. The scriptures tell us that through holy baptism, God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. 
This is what baptism does. Baptism transfers us from the devil's kingdom to the kingdom of God. And as a result, baptism begins in us a lifelong struggle, a battle, a war between us, the new creations that we've come to be as people who have been baptized into Christ, and the spiritual forces of evil, the spiritual forces of evil that are out there in the world, the devil and the temptations of the world as they uh, uh, attack against us each and every day, and the spiritual forces of evil, quite frankly, that still lurk here inside of our hearts as we have our own sinful nature. This is the battle between our new self and our old self, between our new self and the world of temptation out there around us. And this battle is begun in our baptism, which is why in our epistle reading today, Paul says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. With these words, Paul is calling all of us to take up the struggle, the battle, into which we have been baptized, to actively struggle against the sinful temptations out there in the world and the sinful desires right here in our own hearts. He's calling us to engage in the battle, in the war into which we have been baptized. So the question I have for you this morning then is this. How is the battle going for you in your life? How is the struggle against sin going for you? Are you winning the war? Maybe you are. Maybe it's going real well. Maybe you feel strong in the face of the devil, the world, and your own sinful nature. Maybe those temptations, the struggles, feel like they're kind of under control right now. If so, good for you. Or better yet, thanks be to God. For most of you, however, probably all of you, actually, I suspect that things aren't going quite that well, or at least they don't seem to be. I suspect that this is the case because I know how the battle goes for me in my own heart. To be perfectly honest, most days the battle against the devil, the world, and my own sinful nature doesn't go nearly as well as I would like it to either. Maybe you feel overrun, powerless to resist the influx of temptations from out there in the world and the flow of sinful desires that seems to just keep bubbling up inside your own heart. Maybe you feel defeated, overcome, overwhelmed, Maybe you've given up altogether, just given in. Maybe you've resigned yourself to defeat. Or maybe, just maybe, as you listen to me today, you feel as if you haven't really even begun to struggle yet, to engage in the battle. And maybe you're not even sure where to begin. No matter how the battle is going for you, however, I have good news for you today. The good news is that your baptism was more than just a declaration of war, more than just a defiant statement that drew you into a lifelong struggle against enemies who are far stronger than you are. Your baptism is more than that. Your baptism drew you into this war, into this struggle. But it also united you in the closest sense possible with Jesus. The same Jesus who in Mark chapter 1 goes romping around defeating the forces of evil at every turn. With Jesus, the general, the Lord, the master, the champion, the king who has already won the battle 
for you. Through your baptism, you are united with him. Rising up from the waters of the Jordan, Jesus went out and every step along the way, he was victorious. Victorious over sin, victorious over death, victorious of the devil, over the devil. That's what we saw in Mark chapter 1. But the battle doesn't end there, does it? Jesus carries that battle all the way to the cross. We're giving up his life as a ransom for many. He won the war once and for all. Now think about it. Why did he do that? Did he do that so that he could show you how to follow in his footsteps and win the war like he did? No. Did he do this to give you an example for you to follow? No. Did he do this to encourage you to try harder and live up to his doing? No, he did it to win the victory for you. And through your baptism, you have been brought in to that victory. Listen to the words of our epistle reading from Paul's letter to the Romans again. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Through baptism, we, each and every one of us, have been baptized into Jesus' death, his death on the cross that won the victory once and for all. And we've also been baptized into his resurrection. His new life rising from the dead flows through you and me. His victory is our victory. So in the words of the final verse of our hymn of the day today, rise, faint hearts, be resolute. This man is Christ, our substitute. He was baptized in Jordan's stream, proclaimed Redeemer, Lord Supreme. So let's take up the struggle, dear friends. The struggle that began the day we were baptized, the struggle against the devil, the world, and our own sinful nature. Let's take up that struggle and let's begin. Let's begin simply by trusting Jesus, the one who won the victory for us. Because his kingdom, the kingdom which he came to bring, the kingdom which we have been brought into and brought out of the devil's kingdom, into his kingdom, his kingdom, unlike Caesar's kingdom, which lasted only a short while. Caesar was assassinated shortly, just a few years after that civil war was won. But Jesus' kingdom goes through death into life and endures forever. And through your baptism, you have been brought into that very kingdom. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life that is everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have revealed your Son to us in his baptism in the Jordan River, and you have also revealed your name and blessing to us in our own baptism, declaring us to be your beloved children and heirs. Grant that we may daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, living with joy as your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve your church, O Lord, here and scattered throughout the world, especially during these pandemic days. Give steadfast faith to all Christians by the preaching of your word. Enliven all of our hearts to bear one another's burdens and to show mercy to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve all families, O Lord, especially all Christian homes. Turn husband and wife toward one another in love. Equip fathers and mothers for their holy duty as teachers of the faith to their children. And preserve all children in the saving faith and the sure and certain promises of their baptism unto life everlasting. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation, O oh Lord, its leaders and, gov leaders and those who serve for, our, serve for the good of our people and for our protection. Grant peace in our times, O oh Lord, for you alone fight for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give comfort and relief, O oh Lord, to those who are sick, depressed, tired, confused, or in any need. We especially pray for Irma, Roger, Stephen, Robert, Becca, Gerald, Herta, and Annette. Remind them all of your baptismal promise to them and strengthen them to endure the trials set before them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those who mourn, O Lord, especially Wendy and her family at the passing of her mother, and strengthen them in the hope of the resurrection that all those baptized into Christ and into his death will also one day rise with him unto life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you manifested yourself with the Holy Spirit in the fullness of grace at the baptism of your dear Son and with your voice directed us to him who has borne our sins that we might receive grace and remission and forgiveness of all of our sins. Keep us, we pray, in the true faith and hear us now as we pray in your Son's name and as he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you for the abundant mercy that you this day so richly have provided us, blessing us not only with daily bread for our bodies, but also with heavenly food for our souls. Grant that your living and powerful word may abide in our hearts, working mightily in us to your glory and for our salvation. We commit ourselves to your divine protection and fatherly care. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Look in mercy on your church and deliver it from all danger and adversities. By your Holy Spirit, comfort and strengthen all who are in affliction or distress and grant your abiding peace to us all. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join to sing our closing hymn, number 590, Baptized into your name most holy. Baptized into your name, most holy, O Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I claim a place, though weak and lowly, among your saints, your chosen host, buried with Christ and dead to sin. Your spirit now shall live within. My loving Father, here you take me to be henceforth your child and heir. My faithful Savior, here you make me the fruit of all your sorrow share. O Holy Spirit, comfort me when threatened
threatening clouds around I see. My faithful God, you fail me never. Your promise surely will endure. Oh, cast me not away forever. If words and deeds become impure, have mercy when I come defiled. Forgive, uplift, restore your child. All that I am and love most dearly, receive it all, O Lord, from me. Let me confess my faith sincerely. Help me, your faithful child, to be. Let nothing that I am.